Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a very important subject, a subject that's very close to my heart and something I have to deal with with myself very regularly and all of my clients, and that is determining if we're growing muscle and if what we're doing is working for us. So I'm gonna help you answer this question by giving you some tools to assess this. Because past the beginner stages, as a natural athlete, even if you're not natural, it probably becomes very slow at some point, but we don't have this very consistent, regular muscle growth that we can just be like, oh, we look in a month's time and we look visibly more jacked. That just isn't the case, unfortunately. And so we need some tools to assess whether or not something's working and whether or not we need to make an adjustment. So I'm gonna give you three of my main tools that I use with myself and my clients to assess whether or not we're growing muscle in the short, medium, and longer term. So the first metric we're gonna be looking at is our long-term metric. This is something that we look at after multiple months or maybe even years, depending on your level of development. You might capture the data more regularly than that, but you don't really wanna be assessing it regularly more than that because we simply can't see those changes and that is photos or videos something along those lines as a competitor as a natural bodybuilder it might be that you compare stage photos and that might be legitimately a tool that you use to see if you have improved as someone who's just generally into the gym and wanting to improve their physique this might be some photos that you take after diets and you compare back to previous times now there are some really important things to get right with photos because you can convince yourself of progress um, and it not be objective because as many of you will know lighting makes a huge difference whether or not you've just finished a cut or a mass or whatever it might be, it has a huge influence on how you're looking if you have a pump or not. So you want to make sure with these that they're standardized. And that actually is for all of these metrics, they need to be somewhat standardized. Any metric you're using, it needs some standardization because otherwise you can kind of make it seem like something's happening when it isn't. So what do I mean by standardization? So first of all, nutrition wants to be pretty standardized. So whether or not you're taking them first thing in the morning or later in the day, but also if it's like at the end of a cut, at the end of a deload, at the end of a mass gaining phase, like you wanna compare back to previous photos because that's how you're assessing if you've made progress, you're comparing back to previous times, but under similar conditions. So as a general recommendation, I would say during a deload, where maybe you're coming to maintenance is quite a good time in the morning because now you've standardized the morning, you've standardized the fact it's like a deload, so it's like lower volume, lower intensities, and you've now standardized probably that you're in and around maintenance during that period of time. So that standardizes quite a few different variables, but maybe you take your photos and videos, you just note down some of these things that could influence it. And then in addition to that, you wanna standardize kind of how you're taking them. So down to the camera that you're using, because that can also have an influence. Now, a lot of us will use our phones and the photo quality improves over time. So that's something to realize, but still, you wanna somewhat standardize like the camera you take, the lighting, and also like the background, those sort of things really, really help. Uh, practically, uh, a really useful way to do this is having kind of natural light come at you, and you can actually just put your phone on like your windowsill and then stand back from that, and that will kind of give you that. That might not be the most consistent and regular way to do it because obviously everyone knows like the daylight changes and that can influence how you look. So the way I have it set up, and if you're very serious about capturing this data, it might be that you have like a blackout blind behind you, which is what I use, or like a kind of a dark background and nothing too complicated behind you. And then you have like one main light source. So I have like a, a big ring light that I have shining down on me. And then I have a camera in front of me. And now I can use this as a consistent way to get kind of objective, more objective photos of myself and then trying to keep every other variable as similar as possible. Now, because you you have to compare kind of similar body weights, really, that as similar as possible, um, because then you can really objectively, if you're a similar body weight or the same body weight, you look bigger and leaner, you know, big thumbs up, you have gained really good muscle mass. As a natural athlete who's been training many, many years, that's not gonna happen after a month because probably if you're trying to gain muscle and I'll come over some of the common issues and this is one of them, you're gonna be in a surplus and you're probably gaining a little bit more fat than you are muscle over that period of time. So if you're checking every month back to the previous month, you might be looking bigger, but probably also softer. So this is why it's a longer term metric every like six months when you can compare back to previous times or every year where you can compare back and that can be useful. You can add into this kind of body measurements, like circumference measurements, uh, but I'm just gonna give you the three main ones that I find most value in. So that's the first one, photos that are standardized, comparing similar body weights. 
The second metric that you're going to use that again is super practical and that we all have access to is performance over time. And this is going to be a more medium term metric. It's unrealistic to think that we are going to see performance adaptations on a session to session or week to week basis once we've been training considerably for many years. So it's more likely to happen on like a month to month or many month basis that we're going to see objective performance improvements. Unless it's a new movement where we're learning that movement, we're getting neurological adaptations and we're just becoming more skilled. That's not true muscle master in that period of time. It's not very predictive of, predictive of that. But if you are gaining performance in that kind of hypertrophy rep range, uh, if we can name it that, like five to 30 repetitions on movements that you are very comparable with and you've been training for a long time, then you know if performance is going up, you've been doing a good amount of volume, a good amount of intensity for enough time, you've been doing enough stuff in the background to be supporting muscle growth and therefore you're seeing those performance improvements because now you've grown new muscle tissue to deal with that additional stress. So it's really predictive and correlative with performance improvements is your muscle growth. So if you're seeing that happen on a faster basis because of some changes you've made, whether that to sleep, to nutrition, to training, then you can be pretty sure, oh, that was a really positive thing to have done, but it is slower. You can't expect to see these things in a real short term, which is why it's a more medium term metric to be looking at. So it might be that for myself, for example, I like to hit a PR every mesocycle. So that's every like a uh, couple of months, I like to see a, a new PR coming in and hopefully that just continues. And I'm really pleased with that for my kind of years of training and where I am with my bodybuilding. For someone else, it might be every two weeks. For someone else, it might be every like four months. And it also kind of depends on the lift as well. So these, this is one of the like very predictive uh, tools that you can use for muscle growth is performance increases over time just know the time course that you'll kind of be looking at the less time you've been training consistently well the faster you can see these progressions and therefore the longer you've been doing it the slower these sort of things are going to be coming the final metric i'm going to take you through today is your short-term metric and that is what i term stimulus and so these are some things that you can identify within your own body during your training sessions or even within your microcycles, your weeks of training, that can be useful and correlative with muscle growth. So these are things like the pump. Now getting a major pump isn't a surefire, yes, you're growing muscle, but it's correlated with things that we know produce hypertrophy. So likely, if you have a choice between two very similar exercises, but one's getting you a greater pump, or you've made a change and that leads to a greater pump, you're probably putting a big thumbs up more towards muscle growth. So the pump is like cell swelling, it is that kind of muscle that's like a balloon ready to burst. That's kind of the sensation that we're going through there. Some muscle groups get that to a different extent than others, which is why there are other elements of stimulus such as tension and disruption and local muscle fatigue. So one that comes to mind for me is my hamstrings. They never really get a pump feeling, but they kind of feel crampy, they feel tight, they feel disrupted, they feel fatigued locally. Then also the hamstrings also very commonly get quite sore. So soreness isn't, again, needed for muscle growth, but it's often correlated with things that produce lots of hypertrophy, such as training closer to failure, training with higher volumes, uh, training at longer muscle lengths, these sort of things. So getting an amount of soreness can be a useful thing to keep an eye on in the short term to know whether or not you're producing a really good stimulus for hypertrophy. And again, being too sore is also not something you want where you aren't recovering on time between sessions. But if you're getting no soreness at all, no fatigue locally within the muscle, because some muscles, they might not get tore, sore, sorry, but they might feel tired the next day. Then you might reassess your program and be like, maybe I need to do more. Maybe this movement's not great for me. These are some of the things you can also look at. And I think these can be really handy tools in the short term to make adjustments to your program if necessary. And without this, you're kind of a bit lost in the short term to know if there are any adjustments you can make and if you are getting really, really productive sessions. And like I said, these elements aren't necessarily needed or acquired for hypertrophy. They are very often correlated with hypertrophy and things that we know produce growth. So I think they can be really useful tools and I found them personally really useful and my clients have found them really useful to use and produce better results. So we know like we have this short term metric, we have a medium term metric, we have a longer term metric here that we can start assessing and analyzing to make adjustments or knowing if we're on the right track. So they can be really helpful. So this stimulus look in the shorter to kind of medium term within a session within the week. 
So finally, now we've got those three metrics, if things aren't going how you would like them to be going, I have some common issues that I see when people are trying to grow muscle. So the first one is a lack of specificity of training. So this might mean that they are doing like running, they're doing their bodybuilding training, they're doing powerlifting, they're doing like rowing, they're doing everything, you know? They just don't have a lot of directed focus towards one thing. The way I often analogize this is like, if you're trying to be um, very, very well-educated on a specific subject, you get less and less broad and more and more specific as you go through your education. So like, obviously we learn maths, but then maths becomes more and more uh, kind of niched down when you want to get really intelligent at a subsection of maths. I can't think of what one is, that's not my kind of area of ex expertise, but when you do like a PhD, it's incredibly specific towards one thing because there's so much to learn about everything. You can't become such a generalist, so a lot of people lack specificity, and they, if they increase the specificity towards bodybuilding and muscle growth, especially as they get more advanced, it's more important, which is kind of the analogy towards education, then you will see probably improved results. Now, the next one is like a lack of individualization, uh, particularly of like exercise selection. And this is where those kind of short-term metrics of stimulus can be helpful, where you can find what exercises feel better to you in a moment. For me, for the longest time, I was like, barbell back squat, that's the king for like quad development, right? And a lot of people thought this and me included, and I haven't actually back squat for like years now because I, I love the lift, but it simply didn't provide me a good stimulus to my quads. No matter how I tried to adjust it to make it more quad dominant, I get much more of a hack squat, a leg press, even a Smith machine squat. So individualizing things to yourself becomes much more important the more advanced you get. So you need to get this individual feedback. Then a clear one, a lack of a consistent surplus. Like your body weight probably wants to be going up over time to allow performance to go up, to allow like you to, to gain this muscle. It's the most surefire way that you're gaining muscle. The best thing you can do nutritionally is that surplus. And then obviously sufficient protein, spreading that protein throughout the day, carbohydrates around your sessions. Like these are more kind of uh, nuanced things to think about, but a consistent surplus. So many people just actually lack a consistent surplus over time, seeing their body weight trickle up. Very, very important. Then a lack of sufficient high quality sleep. It's like a foundation to everything. And I say a lack of sufficient high quality sleep because I don't think there is like a necessary quantity you have to hit. It's more so, do you feel well rested through the day? Do you have to rely on caffeine or not? Are you need feel like you need a nap? Those sort of things. You should be able to have really high quality sleep and that will just allow for so much more muscle growth than otherwise because your performance will be better, your recovery will be better, your growth therefore will be better. So a sufficient high quality sleep. And then a final one, and there's probably more, these are the ones that came to mind when I initially thought about this, is just a lack of effort. And that could be a lack of effort in terms of training hard enough within the gym or doing enough volume. Like these two, like you even need like, uh, you can't kind of make up for the one without the other, you can to a certain extent. So if you're not training quite so hard, you can maybe make up for that with volume. And similarly, if you are training super hard, you can kind of make up for that with having less volume by tr training super hard. There's probably a sweet spot in the middle there, but you have to put in effort. If you're never getting uncomfortable in the gym, if you're never feeling tired, if you leave your lift, leave your lift, sorry, and it just never challenged you, you're not going to see enough of a stress for the body to have to adapt and respond to and for you to grow muscle. So a lack of effort. And with all of this, remember to be patient because like I said at the start, muscle growth is slow past the newbie stages. So you have to be patient with what you're doing. Don't make too many adjustments in the short term trust in that process and you almost don't have to trust in that process because we have some really good principles of what we know causes muscle growth we know if you kind of train hard in the gym with lots of effort and you leave the gym feeling like you had a good workout and you're regularly kind of coming to sessions and being able to add load or reps to the bar over the longer term and you eat in a calorie surplus to support that and good, get good sleep, like you're doing a lot of the fundamental basics right. And you just need to, if you haven't seen that progress yet, it isn't a case of like, you're clearly doing something wrong. You're missing the silver bullet. No, no, no. More than likely, there might be some small tweaks you can make to make things a little bit more efficient, but more than likely, you just need to have more time consistently doing those things. And uh, that's normally the answer for a lot of people. So uh, I hopefully this video has been helpful. You have those now three metrics that you can use to assess whether or not what you're doing is leading to muscle growth. And if you are struggling with anything, if you need someone to help you troubleshoot, make your process more efficient, you want to get all the results you can from the efforts that you put into the gym, at Revive Stronger, 
online coaching is what we do. Uh, that's what we do day in and day out. That's how we put kind of bread on the table uh, for our families. Um, and uh, if you are interested in coaching, therefore, if you'd like to hop on a call with one of our team, then absolutely check the link in the bio. You can book in a consultation and then hopefully we can help you make sure you're gaining muscle. And as always, guys, if this has been helpful, let me know in the comments. If you'd like to see anything else, if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up, give us a subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.